Hello everyone. Welcome to a module on the cardiovascular system. In this module, we will talk about two types of curves that is cardiac and vascular function curve and Starlings curve. Let us first talk about the short the Starlings curve. Now what is Starlings law? Starlings law states that the force of contraction is directly proportional to the end diastolic length of the cardiac muscle fiber. The end diastolic length of the cardiac muscle fiber is equal to the preload. Okay, so what it states that the amount of contraction or the force of contraction is directly proportional to the end diastolic length of the cardiac muscle fiber. Now, plotting the graph between the stroke volume or the cardiac output with the end diastolic volume or the preload, we get this kind of a graph. This is the normal Starling curve. Okay. Now, when there is an increase in the contractility, okay, or when there is an increase in the stroke volume, when we do exercise, there is an increase in the contractility, and hence this increase in the contractility leads the graph to shift towards the left and form this kind of a graph. So, this is the basic graph of exercise in which the stroke volume increases with even small preload okay so the stroke volume of the cardiac output is high with very less preload as okay so that is the first variation the second variation is there is a decrease in the contractility with the loss of myocardium example in myocardial infarction or beta blockers which are used acutely or non-hydropyridine non calcium channel blockers like verampamil or diltiazin or dilated cardiomyopathy. So when basically there is some kind of a heart failure or there is a myocardial infarction, the stroke volume or the contractility majorly decreases, correct? And hence the graph shifts down. But when there is a use of catecholamines or positive ionotropes, okay, ionotropes means substances which strengthens the muscle contractility or muscle strength it again tries to restore back to the normal but it actually doesn't go back to the normal it just tries to you know meet up in the middle is it clear so this is increase in the contractility or increase in the stroke volume this is decrease in the contractility and hence contractility is the major factor in the starlings curve is it clear? Now let us talk about the next section of curves that is cardiac and vascular function curve. Now let me just zoom into this primary diagram. Okay. Now on the y axis we have cardiac output or venous return. On the x axis we have right atrial pressure. Is it clear? Now this is the point where the cardiac output is zero and the right atrial pressure is maximum okay so this is the mean systemic pressure point this is the point where the right atrial pressure is zero and the cardiac output is maximum but where does the heart actually function it functions at the intersection of these two curves okay so this red curve is called as the cardiac function curve or the heart function curve and the blue curve is the vascular function curve or the arterial and the venous system function curve. And hence, the heart functions at the intersection of these two points, that is at this point. Is it clear? Now, first talking about, there are three effects of on these kinds of curve. The first one is the ionotropy effect. The second one is the venous return effect. And the third one is the total peripheral resistance effect okay we'll talk about each of them separately starting with the ionotropy curve okay on the ionotropy curve there's a change in the contractility primarily okay so when we plotted a graph of ionotropy curve when there's an increase in the ionotropy that means increase in the strength of the muscle fiber it leads to a upward curve you can look at this curve that means the stroke volume or the cardiac output of the venous return is increased. Is it clear? But when we use negative ionotropes, then 
the stroke volume of the cardiac output decreases. Is it clear? Now, what are the examples of positive anotropes? The positive anotropes are due to catecholamines, digoxin, or exercise. Okay, whereas negative anotropes are heart failures or reduced ejection fraction, or narcotic overdose, sympathetic inhibition. These are the causes of negative anotropes. So, is it clear? So, it shifts across the vascular function curve, but it is parallel to the cardiac function curve. Is it clear? The second graph is opposite of the anotropic curve, that is volume increase or volume decrease of the venous return. Now, when the amount of blood coming back to the right atrium or the venous return increases, the right atrial pressure increases, correct? And so does the cardiac output. And hence, the shift of the graph is towards this side. So this is a increase in the volume or the venous return. But when there is a decrease in the blood coming back to the right atrium, the right atrial pressure decreases and so does the cardiac output and hence the graph shifts parallel to the vascular function curve on the cardiac function curve. Parallel to the vascular function curve on the cardiac function curve. This is how I remember. Is it clear? Now, what are the causes of increase or decrease? The increase in the volume can be due to fluid infusion or sympathetic activity. The decrease can be due to acute hemorrhage that leads to decrease or the loss of blood or due to spinal anesthesia. Is it clear? So, these are the major causes that you have to remember. And how does the graph present with these causes? The last one is the total peripheral resistance curve. Now, when there is a change in the total peripheral resistance, there is a decrease or the increase in the cardiac output. Okay, So, if there is more resistance, the cardiac output decreases. And if there is very high resistance, the cardiac output in decreases. If there is low resistance, the cardiac output increases. Okay, So, this graph is opposite of these two graphs. So, when there is a change in the total peripheral resistance there is altered cardiac output okay so it is by the intersection of the two curves so you draw combination of these two curves and when these two intersect these are the points of total peripheral resistance okay so the total peripheral resistance increases over here and the total peripheral resistance decreases over here okay is it clear? Now, the increase in the total peripheral resistance leads to a decrease in the cardiac output. Correct? The increase in the total peripheral resistance leads to a decrease in the cardiac output, which is due to vasosuppressors. And decrease in the total peripheral resistance leads to increase in the cardiac output, which is due to exercise or AV shunt. Am I clear? So, these are the three graphs. Now, the changes often occur in tandem, okay, and may be reinforcing. That means it can be a combination of both. That is, in exercise, there is an increase in ionotropy as well as decrease in the total peripheral resistance to maximize the cardiac output, correct? And in heart failure, there is a decrease in ionotropy. And since there is fluid retention to increase the preload to maintain cardiac output that means it is a compensatory mechanism so when there is a heart failure due to decrease in the ionotropy there is a fluid retention and hence it keeps the cardiac output normal it tries tries to keep it normal is it clear so these are the three basic graphs of cardiac and vascular function curves is it clear so please remember these causes and how does the graph respond Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please click on the like button and do subscribe to this channel. Let me know in the comment section below which topics do you want me to explain. Thank you.